How's work going so far? Asked my boss, Owen Martin, casually before we walked in on Saturday night. Once this shift was over, I would have completed my first week of work at Martin Grocers. It also happened to be the first time that Owen spoke to me since hiring me. My instructions were given, and queries were answered by a fellow employee, Nina Cortez. So his deep voice definitely took me aback. Good, thanks, I'm good, I said wearily, and he simply nodded. Good, good, he repeated. You heading home? You want a ride? I was sure my eyes dilated for a split second there, as Owen barely interacted with employees throughout the week. Our interactions were limited to awkward eye contact, like on Wednesday. I was stacking the shelves with canned food when I saw him eyeing me from his seat behind the counter. He swiftly looked away after meeting my eye. Another brief interaction was yesterday, when we were both silently behind the counter. Owen was looking through the sales record of the store while I was on duty at the cashier. A customer went up to ask a question about the expiration date of a product, and Owen and I reached out for the item at the same time, our hands meeting in the middle. The electric contact made me look up at him, and he met my eyes too, but quickly looked away. So to hear him asking me if I wanted a ride now after the awkward circumstances we were in was a shock. I must have pondered for too long because he retracted his offer. You know what? Never mind. I'll see you on Monday. Lock up he uttered without glancing at me. The next week, I was surprised when Owen came in and placed a cup of coffee in front of me. He headed towards the storeroom, saying another word. I inspected the cup, astonished when I realized that he got my usual order from the coffee shop, an iced cappuccino. How did he know that I liked that specific coffee? He didn't make an effort to talk to me for the rest of the day. Instead, he was stuck in the storeroom, organizing a ton of stuff. Hey Nico, wanna grab lunch together? Asked Nina as I was heading to the storeroom to thank Owen. I shook my head. No thanks, uh, you go ahead, I replied. I felt quite bad though, as I know that Nina has been trying to capture my attention since I started working at this grocery. It was not like I didn't like girls. I did. I still do, I suppose, as I always have. I was just not interested in her. Instead of taking up Nina's lunch offer, I snuck into the storeroom where Owen has been working all morning. He looked up when I walked in, but didn't utter a word. What's with the coffee? I casually questioned as I sat next to him. Peace offering for leaving you behind on Saturday, he replied. I raised my eyebrow. How come you know my order? I asked. I've seen you grabbing the same drink every break time last week, he answered shortly, resuming his work and not minding my presence. A thank you would be nice. You've been observing me? I asked curiously. And thank you, Owen. He shrugged. You're a new employee. I'm the boss. Yeah, that was the thing. He was my boss, so my stomach had no business having butterflies right now. You do that for every new employee? I retorted, and that shut him up. I chuckled lightly, and that earned me a smile from Owen. He was an incredibly handsome man. Sure, he was a little older than me, but he was a lot more strapping and manly. No, just the ones I like, he said after a comfortable second of silence. That made me smile. He intimidated me when I first came in for an interview, and frankly, none of the employees chat with him on a daily basis since he was so quiet and reserved. By no means was he a mean boss, in fact, Nina said that he was very generous in giving bonuses and was easy to work with. He was just not your overly friendly boss, I suppose. But from that afternoon, my dynamics with him changed drastically. He bought me coffee regularly, which always took me aback, but I appreciated it nonetheless. We also realized we had common interests, such as our love for plants and baking. I can't believe you care for plants too. So out of character for you, I expressed. Out of character? Really? He asked. Yeah, you don't really look like the most gentle soul, you know, I replied. He nodded. I'm just shy, but I take interest in things like plants and baking, you know. No such thing is too tough for these things, he explained. You know what? I'll bring you some pastries to try. You can be a judge of my cooking. And the next day, he indeed brought me some freshly baked pastries, which warmed my heart. I knew how busy he was as a store owner, and yet he painstakingly made these for me. Mmm, they're so good, I said, as I did my happy dance, which seemed recurring every time I ate something good. You look so cute doing that, he said as he stared into my eyes. My heart started thumping in my chest. Aware of the proximity between us, I continued eating the cinnamon roll he made, feasting on the delectable cream cheese. 
Owen then gestured to my face, and I didn't understand what he was saying until he swiped the side of my mouth with his finger and wiped away the cream cheese that must have been all over my mouth the second before. At this point, I was blushing so profusely and could hear his warm breath against my skin because of how close we were. But then Nina arrived for her shift, and we were forced to break apart. I avoided Owen for the rest of the day, scared to get caught by another fellow employee in a suspicious position. You and Owen seem pretty close, said Nina casually during our lunch break. I merely hummed and saw her staring right at me, as though figuring out what was going on between me and Owen. Look, don't get me wrong, but I have to ask, are you, by any chance, gay? She questioned softly. I shook my head hesitantly. Although I didn't identify myself as gay, I was very much conflicted, and I have been since I was little. Thus, when Owen entered my life, it was safe to say that I got even more confused. No, not really. I mean... I've liked girls all my life, I defended. I conveniently left out the part where I found a lot of men in my high school attractive before, but I especially didn't state the part where I found myself looking forward to seeing Owen every day, feeling jittery at his presence, and just loving his company so much that it's alarming. Friends simply don't do that, more so bosses and employees. Nina didn't seem convinced, but nodded at my answer nonetheless. Was she suspicious of me? Did she think that I was sleeping around? Especially with my boss to get a raise or a special treatment at work? Oh, I only asked because you're an attractive man, Nico, she said meekly. Don't think I have not noticed how smart you are from the moment you stepped foot in here. Oh, maybe she didn't have suspicions after all. Maybe she wanted to make sure I like girls before she made the first move. This was perfect. By dating Nina, I'll not only kill rumors about my blooming relationship with Owen, but I'll also have to distance myself from him. Owen was an amazing guy, sure. He was reserved and extremely quiet, at times barely even saying a word. But once you got to know him, he was such a dynamic man. He was smart, passionate, and highly misunderstood. Not to mention, he was kind and understanding, even just in the first few weeks I spent working for him. But that was the thing. He was my boss. There was no way that I could pursue this blossoming dynamic without compromising my new work. I needed this job to support myself, and if I wanted to keep it, I needed to steer clear of my boss. Relationships like mine and Owen just don't work. There was a hierarchy, one that I had to respect and follow. And in that hierarchy, there was no place for a romantic connection with my boss. And so I made a move that I hoped would end it once and all. I asked Nina out. Are you... do you want... I stuttered at first. Do you want to grab a bite sometime? There's an uh, Italian place, I know, not too far from here. It's affordable, and I know how much you love Italian. Like a date? She asked right back, her eyes widening in disbelief. You're asking me out? From that day, Nina and I became inseparable. We ate our lunch together and headed home together. Any free time during our duty was spent together. Owen and I still talked, but we were not nearly as close anymore. I purposefully distanced myself from him as soon as I saw Nina as a getaway car. I felt extremely bad for it, but I knew just how persistent and relentless Owen could be. There was no better way that I could have convinced him to back off than to show him that I'd moved on, that I wasn't interested in him anymore. The first time he saw Nina and I holding hands, I witnessed how sad his eyes had become. He saw us in the parking lot as we were heading to work, and he spared a glance at me first before his gaze shifted to our intertwined hands. Nina, being the ever so jolly employee, greeted him, but he only nodded stiffly before walking off without another word. I tried to convince myself that this was nothing. Perhaps he just didn't like it when his employees dated because that may cause a conflict of interest somewhere along the road. But deep down, I knew it was because he felt replaced. I dished him without another word, even worse, I abandoned our budding romance for a woman. Gone were the days where Owen would bring a coffee to the counter when I was on duty. Instead, I was met with utter silence and the occasional glare. I would make small talk to ease the tension, but he wouldn't reciprocate. I deserved that. I ran away from our situationship as soon as I started to feel something, and I took solace in Nina. I also think that she was getting the shorter end of the stick for dating me. For once, Owen started taking out his frustration on her, subtly. You think camping overnight would do us good? Asked Nina flirtatiously as she ran her fingers through my hair. We were seated behind the cashier register, waiting for the next customer, when suddenly, a booming voice interrupted our sweet talk. Maybe if you spent more time arranging and organizing the shelves, we wouldn't have such a messy store, 
as opposed to flirting your day away, Nina, Owen reprimanded. That caused Nina to apologize profusely before heading to a far corner of the store, far away from the grumpy Owen. Why are you so rude to her? I questioned. She's nice and kind. Be gentle. He pointed a finger toward me, berating me as well. You have no business telling me to be gentle. You lost that right the moment you decided that a guy like me wasn't good enough for you, and you ran into her arms. That left me astounded, but I dared not say another word. He was my boss, after all, and our relationship was now purely professional. A couple of days later, Nina ran to the storeroom, crying her eyes out. I was updating the inventory, and I stopped to comfort her, taking her into my arms and caressing her hair. What is it, sweetie? I asked. Owen hates me. He really hates me, she exclaimed. He's usually quiet, right? But he now scolds me at every chance he gets. And today, he humiliated me in front of a customer. Pissed was an understatement. How dare he take his anger out on Nina? She did nothing wrong. I decided to take matters into my own hands and emerge from the storeroom and confront Owen, who was now in the front of the store, presumably heading home. Owen, wait up! Owen, I shouted. He stopped dead in his tracks, but he didn't even spare a glance at me. How dare you embarrass Nina? What did the girl ever do to you, huh? I challenged him. She's incompetent. Besides, the customer was outraged by her incompetence, so it's only right that she gets scolded by her superior, he replied arrogantly. Are we done here? No, we're not. I'll not let you treat my... I wandered off. I then realized I didn't know what Nina and I had, and this seemed to elicit a smirk from Owen's face. Treat your what? Your girlfriend? Mocked Owen. You and I both know you don't like her. In fact, you don't like girls at all. I took a step towards him, staring deep into his blue eyes. And why is that? How did you know? I didn't even tell- And then he cut me off with an earth-shattering kiss. The kind of kiss that makes you feel as though your lips are two cars that had just violently collided. The kind of kiss so magical that you'll never ever forget. This. He gestured towards the two of us. That's how I know you don't love that girl inside. The following day, the tension between me and Owen was so thick that it was uncomfortable. Nina must have noticed because she asked what was up, but I dismissed it at once. Owen refused to even look into my eye. As usual, he took his frustration out on Nina. While I stood by my opinion of Owen being a good guy, what he was doing to her was a major asshole move and it took every bit of me to muster up the courage and stand up against him. You know what? Put the Valentine's Day display to the other side. I don't like how it looks there, he ordered Nina. But you said to put it there. I spent the whole morning doing it. I think it looks fine, she tried to protest. Right, Nico? I was put on the spot. I merely nodded, which earned me a glare from Owen. Is he your boss or me? Owen said sarcastically, evidently irate at Nina, trying to get my approval. That shut Nina up, and she spent the afternoon transferring the display from one part of the store to another, as per the request of Owen. I went out for a quick break and got Nina and me coffee. I thought of getting a cup for Owen too, but as tempting as it was, I stopped myself. That may reignite whatever we had, and I was still not okay with having feelings for my boss. It simply wasn't right. So when I placed Nina's coffee cup on the cashier counter and Owen was just beside her, I wasn't surprised when I heard a scoff. What was wrong with him? Couldn't he be happy for me? As expected, he lashed out at Nina and I almost felt sadistic that I was going out of my way to elicit a response from him, as though I was enjoying his jealousy. I reached my breaking point though later that week. Nina and I went to work together and as usual, I gave her a peck just before we entered the store and to my surprise, Owen was standing right by the door. He was looking straight at us, and he had a distant look on his face. I'll see you later, love you, Nina said as she went to the storeroom. I said a weak love you back to her, but the whole time, my eyes were on Owen. He was now staring right at me, still with the same piercing glare. Later that day, I was in the parking lot, waiting for Nina to finish her shift, when I heard a commotion in the store. I swiftly left my comfortable driver's seat and rushed into the store, thinking that a customer may be harassing one of our staff. But it was Owen, screaming his lungs out at Nina. I didn't go in at first, and in retrospect, I felt terrible for it. But I simply watched the scene unfold from outside the grocery. All you do here is lounge around and wait for your little boyfriend, who doesn't even give a crap about you, Owen boomed. You're wasting my time and money. Not to mention, you annoy the shit out of me. At this point, Nina was full-on bawling. 
If I were a good boyfriend, or if I truly liked her as much as I claimed I did, I would have stormed in and defended her from Owen's wrath. Alas, I didn't. I stood there, flabbergasted. What did I ever do to you? You weren't like this before, Nina fought back. You were a good boss, and then you started lashing out at me the moment I started hanging out with Nico. Is that it, huh? You have feelings for me? My heart was pounding so quickly in my chest, I anticipated his answer, knowing it could make or break what was going on between him and me. Hell no, it isn't you. Feelings for you? Come on, give me more credit. In fact, if you want, I'll fire the both of you so you can spend your time flirting elsewhere, because I can't stand it anymore. I've had enough. Nina looked horrified, as though a realization dawned upon her. Oh my god, it's not me, she reflected. It's Nico. It was going around before that you were by, and I just didn't mind it, thinking it was all rumors. But all along, you've got eyes for Nico, and you hated me because I was with him. And the thing is, he's got eyes for you too. Oh my god, I've been a fool. Owen was silent, neither denying nor confirming the allegations. I love him, he said suddenly. He doesn't know, but I love him, and I loathe you with every fiber of my being for taking him from me. That was when I decided to go into the store and make my presence known. They both looked at me in surprise. You know what? You can have him. You two played me in your little game of chase. You, Owen, have humiliated me in every humanly way possible. And I've had enough, shouted Nina before she turned to me. And you, you let him. Not once have you stood up for me because deep down you liked when Owen lashed out at me because it shows that he still loves you. You both disgust me. Get out, Nina, I said, seething at her hurtful words. You've done enough damage here. Not that Owen was always right, but you crossed the line too. Oh, trust me, I'm out of here. But two gay men running a grocery in this small town and potentially spreading their diseases? Oh, you'll never succeed, and I'll make sure of it, Nina asserted before walking out. Owen sighed and scratched his head. I'm sorry you had to hear all that, he said softly. For the first time in weeks, I saw the Owen that I fell in love with. He was gentle, soft, and vulnerable. You were an asshole, you know, I said, and that earned a small smile from him. I know, but Nina was really getting on my nerves, even before you guys got together. She always gave off the mean girl energy vibe, you, you know? Owen reasoned. And you were jealous, I teased. Shut up. You were the one who left me hanging. So admit, you were jealous. And that was when he crashed his lips against mine. And never before have I felt a kiss so moving and passionate. I was jealous, but now I know I had no reason to be. You're in denial of how you felt about me, and I can't blame you for that. I know you've identified as straight all your life, and it must have been terrifying to realize that you were falling for a man. I ran my hands through his soft brown locks. I was terrified, but I was a coward, and for that, I'm sorry. I ran away instead of facing it headstrong. I knew all along that I had feelings for you, I confessed. It's okay now, he said as he placed his forehead against mine. You're home. The next week, Owen and I had our honeymoon phase. Every second of work was enjoyable, especially since I was working with my boyfriend. Good morning, he greeted me as he placed a coffee cup in front of me for my baby. I kissed him before getting back to work, smiling from ear to ear. The past week, we had gotten to know each other more, and I was finally seeing the layers of Owen beneath his strict and reserved facade. I was also coming to terms with my sexuality, finally acknowledging that the doubts I had all my life led to this. I'm gay, and I'm happy about it. With Owen by my side, I knew I could face just about anything. Our little bubble was everything I wanted it to be. In the past relationships, I didn't even come close to what Owen and I shared, and I finally figured out why. All those past relationships were with women. I always felt like I was doing something wrong, as though there was an aspect missing. But with Owen, it felt natural like pieces of a puzzle falling into place. We fell into an easy routine. We usually spent the night over either at his place or mine, but usually in the former as his apartment was nearer to the grocery. We would cook our meals together, dancing around the apartment in between the process. After dinner, we would crawl into bed and play a movie or a video game. It was a routine that I could do forever and ever. Until Nina came back and disturbed our peace. I was working with the morning shift alone one day when a familiar silhouette approached the grocery. It was Nina. Panic started reverberating through my body as I thought she'll cause havoc in Owen's store, especially since he was not around. But I started getting even more nervous when she approached me calmly. Can we talk? She said meekly, and I nodded. She pulled me aside and took a deep breath. 
Owen is married, she said nonchalantly, as though she was not delivering life-altering news for me. He's still married. Francine Martin is the name of his wife. They've been together since they were in high school and got married. I stared at her, holding my breath. The first thing that entered my mind was that this was sabotage. Nina got fired and lost me, her current fling, at the same time because of Owen. She was just taking her long-awaited revenge on him. This wasn't true. How could he be married? How could he omit such information? We were happy and this was surely bullshit. You're insane, I said breathily. Nina, have some respect for yourself and get out. Stop trying to ruin my relationship with Owen. It's not going to make me come back to you. I am not ruining your relationship. I'm telling the truth. If you don't believe me, then read these, she instructed as she dropped a folder in front of me. Goodbye, Nico. Don't say I didn't warn you. With that, she left, leaving behold the folder which could make or break my relationship. Taking a sharp breath, I decided to open it at once, and tears started welling up in my eyes as soon as I saw the wedding pictures. Photos after photos of a younger Owen, and a beautiful blonde girl whom I presume was Francine. Besides the wedding photos, there was also screenshotted evidence from social media, primarily from Francine's pages. It was unmistakable. They were married. The question is, are they still married? Further, why did Owen keep this from me? I gave Owen the silent treatment all day long. Well, it was more of a partial silent treatment, since I still communicated with him whenever it was a work-related concern or if we were making small talk. It wasn't until we were closing down the store did I confront him. Who is Francine? I asked directly, not wanting to beat around the bushes any further. He was wide-mouthed, clearly taken aback by my sudden knowledge. My heart dropped. His face said it all, and I knew at once that my suspicions were right. Nico, I can explain, he said weakly. No, you don't get to make that face at me, I retorted, referring to the pout and sad eyes he was now pulling on me. He knew the effect of that pitiful face on me, that manipulative bastard. But please, hear me out, he breathed. Francine is my wife. We were together almost seven years before we got married, but we have separated. We haven't been together for over two years now, and trust me when I say I've moved on. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. You have a wife, and you didn't tell me. You lied. I'm sorry, he replied, crestfallen. I know how devastating it would have been for you, and I didn't want to bring up a relationship that I have left so far in the past. The thoughts of talking about Francine unlock so many traumatic memories, so many abusive moments to which I attribute my anxiety and shy nature. It was my turn to widen my eyes at this point. No wonder he seemed so soulless and heartless when I first got here. No wonder he felt so alone. He had a condescending wife who took every chance to bring him down so she could pull herself up. I didn't know, I uttered. I didn't know she hurt you. I never talk about it to anyone ever. Dynamics like the one I shared with Francine took something away from my manhood. She hurt me emotionally and the effects are still lasting to this day. I scooted closer to him and rested my head on his shoulder. You can tell me, I said. Only when you're ready though. I know you've got your demons, and that it isn't easy to fight them. I'm damaged goods, Nico, unlike you, who is always happy and making everyone around him better. I'm not like that. I'm quite the opposite, like dark clouds looming over everyone. It's okay. I got you now, I assured him as he kissed the top of my head. Gradually, Owen started opening up to me about the demons of his past. He told me stories about the decline of his marriage with Francine, and how it eventually ended with her leaving him for another man. Piece by piece, I started to understand the way he was. I didn't think Owen was perfect before, even before I fell in love with him. I knew that he had his flaws, because so did I. But I knew now that he wasn't perfect, and yet, I still loved him with every piece of me. Days passed, and we were falling back into a peaceful and blissful routine, when Nina struck again. This time around, she left a nasty review both on Martin Grocer's Facebook page as well as Google reviews. Owen was clearly frustrated as this could impact the public's perception of the store. Inconsiderate and rude owner and unprofessional employees, really? He said reading parts of Nino's review. He even mentioned that the grocery wasn't worth supporting because it's run by a gay man? Unbelievable, I thought her homophobia is only displayed when she's attacking us personally, but it turns out that she's perfectly fine with displaying it in real life and for all to see, I commented. How disgusting. God, 
She really went on and on about how customers shouldn't patronize the store because of its owner. She's even trying to appeal to conservative old Christians in town to boycott the store, Owen added. I also scrolled through the replies to her now viral review. Oh look, so many people stood up for us. This woman named Caroline totally berated Nina and said that there's no room for hatred in this town, I exclaimed. My heart warming at the sight of random strangers standing up for us. This man named Lionel said that Nina's a bigger red flag than this lovely gay couple will ever be, Owen responded. Wow, he really called her out. She deserves it, I replied. We were satisfied reading comments from other users of social media, with some of our loyal customers coming to our defense. As if her slander online wasn't enough, Nina barged into the store the next day to cause another scene. It was around 7pm and because it was payday, the store was packed and every employee was working hard to manage the influx of customers. I was scanning the items of another customer when I heard her scream. Attention everyone, are you a regular of Martin Grocers? Well. Let me warn you about this nasty ass grocery, and it's even worse employees, she exclaimed. She got the attention of plenty of people bored in line. I looked at Owen, who quickly acted and attempted to guide Nina towards the door to minimize the scandal she was causing, but to no avail. She stood her ground, and I suppose Owen didn't push her away, lest he'll be mistaken as physically assaulting her. I was working here. I was a good worker. I was diligent and hardworking. I was basically an employer's dream. But because of the prejudices of this owner, I got fired. He not only verbally abused me, but assaulted me, she wrongfully claimed as she showed a bruise on her upper arm. I heard some gasps from the crowd. I couldn't blame them. If I didn't know Nina any better, I would have considered the possibility of her telling the truth. Some panicked whispers reverberated throughout the store, as though they believed the lies she was spewing out. I suggest all of you find another place and do not patronize this grocery which has an abuser for its owner," Nina encouraged. At this point, Owen looked panicked, and the customers looked frantic. No! This woman is lying, I'm an employee, and Owen is the best boss there is out there, I came to his defense. I agree, another employee named Tyler chimed in. Owen may be quiet and shy at times, but he is by no means abusive. And besides, you've been fired for over a month now, Nina. You haven't even set foot in this store again while Owen is around. Quit the lies. Here, here, another customer testified. I've been a regular since the grocery opened, and I attest to how kind the owner is. He can't do such a thing. This earned approving hmms from the other customers, and they all nodded amiably at Owen, who looked more relaxed now that both his employees and customers were backing him up. You, on the other hand, lady, said another customer, pointing at Nina. I remember your unwillingness to help me before. You were so rude. You're hard to forget. Get out. Stop ruining this man's honest hustle, said a customer, and lots agreed. I've been a regular in this store for the past few years, and not once did we have a problem with Owen, another customer came to his defense. I was elated to see Nina's embarrassed and infuriated face. She stormed out but not before warning Owen once again. I'm not done with you. You ruined my life. Look around. I'm without a job because of you, and soon you'll be without one too, Nina warned. I scrambled and finished assisting the current customer before going to console Owen. I placed my hand on his back and kissed his cheek. You'll be okay, sweetie, I whispered. The people of this town love you and will stand by you. I know, Owen replied, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful to you. But I fear for your safety, Nico. Nina's a very vengeful person, and I'm afraid of what she might do. We'll be okay, I reassured him. It turns out that Owen had every right to be worried, because Nina was indeed plotting to destroy the store. I was in the store late at night doing inventories while Owen was at the front desk, securing the petty cash, when I heard a scream from the front of the store. Fire! Owen, the store's on fire, said a voice. I recognized it as Mr. Avery the elderly man who owns the hardware beside Martin Grocers. Panic started coursing through my veins, and I hurriedly grabbed Owen's hand and was going to guide us out when I realized that the fire had already consumed the doorway. Help, Mr. Avery! We're stuck! I screamed. But he wasn't responding. Instead, I heard a commotion outside. Get her! It was her! Commanded Mr. Avery. She set the place on fire! We got her. Call the fire department, said an unfamiliar voice. Help, Mr. Avery! Owen shouted this time around. I got you. Stay calm. Help is on its way, reassured Mr. Avery. After five minutes, the firefighters were nowhere to be found, and I already exhausted every prayer that I knew. 
I'm scared, I said as I held Owen's hand tightly. If anything happens to me, just know that I love you with every piece of me, okay? I've never loved anyone as much as I love you. In fact, I don't think I've truly known love until I found you. I love you. Owen placed his forehead against mine and squeezed my hand. We'll be okay. Help is on its way. Don't you dare say your goodbyes now. I love you and I dream of a future for us. We will get through this, he consoled me. True enough, the firefighters arrived seconds later and got to work. Minutes later, the door was freed up and Owen and I were able to get out, unscathed. I gave Mr. Avery a big hug and thanked him profusely. It turned out that he was on the way home with his sons when he saw Nina starting the fire. His sons acted quickly and chased after her. They managed to restrain her until the cops came, and they also called the fire department to report the arson. Police escorted Nina to the nearest station. I'm not done with you! Wait until you see me next! She threatened me and Owen. The next time we see you, you'll be behind bars, and we'll be here, continuing the success you so desperately tried to end. Months later, Owen and I have already developed a full routine. After the arson incident that Nina initiated, the kind community offered to lend us some helping hands to try and restore the business. This was initiated by Mr. Avery, who offered free supplies from his hardware so that we can replace the parts of the store that were damaged by the fire. Thankfully, a community founded on Facebook rallied behind us and helped the employees of Martin Grocers in restoring the store to its former glory. It turns out that Nina tried to slander Owen and his store online. Lots of people knew about the grocery. Her unkind words really backfired as a lot of people felt pity that Owen and I were constantly being harassed by her. Nina, on the other hand, was recently sentenced to a year in prison for the crime of arson. Owen and I, alongside our family and friends, were at the trial, and to say that we were satisfied after she finally got what she deserved was an understatement. Throughout the year, Owen and I's relationship continued to progress. We had moved in together, and he even made me the co-owner of Martin's Grocer, which was beginning to expand to other branches. The publicity the grocery had got because of Nina's online slander, alongside the issue of the arson, turned out beneficial. The number of customers patronizing the stores was at an all-time high, and the publicity boost really helped with that. Sometime in the next year, Nina was released from prison, and surprisingly, she was meek when she came to us for help. Nobody in the town would hire her, what with being an ex-convict and being notorious for her crazy behavior at her last job. Owen quickly turned her down, asking her to restart her life elsewhere, because we really didn't want the drama that accompanied her. She was devastated, especially after seeing the immense success that the grocery has reached. Alas, everything was falling into place. Nina was out of our lives. Owen and I were content living together and worked in unison to maintain the success of the grocery. Most importantly, we found a home in each other. Turns out, the boss whom I thought was mean actually became the love of my life. The end. How do you think you should deal with crazy exes? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become a part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become a part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.